Hi everyone, it's Dr. Krad here, and today I'm going to share an interesting case with you. This patient came to me for a second opinion. The following week, he was actually scheduled already for cataract surgery with laser and with the panoptics lens. On my exam, he showed a clear history of uveitis with significant posterior synechiae, changes in macular pigmentation with possible macular degeneration. I'll let you know how I approached this case, and if you stick around, I'll show you how it all turned out. After creating my paracentesis, I'm gonna irrigate the anterior chamber with preservative-free elidocaine and epinephrine. Sometimes, if the synechiae are mild, just irrigating the lidocaine can separate some of them, but in this case, it looked really dense. Okay. Next, we're gonna form the anterior chamber with dispersive viscoelastic. I'm using the gel to gently dissect the adhesions from the iris onto the lens. And the pupillary margin is extremely stiff. Sometimes once you break up those synechiae, you can see the pupil dilate significantly, but this was very rigid. I could tell that the pupillary function would not be normal after cataract surgery, despite breaking the synechiae. So in those cases, I like to do a pupillary stretch. That softens the pupillary margin. With a rigid pupil, it's often difficult to put in a malugan ring. Iris hooks work better in that case, unless you stretch out the pupil first. Here I'm separating the rest of the synechiae and creating space underneath the iris for my instrumentation. So this patient, despite counseling him on macular degeneration, limited best corrective visual acuity, he still wanted the panoptics, and I wasn't comfortable doing that. I actually called his retina specialist and found out that they had recommended an injection for treating his macular disease, but the patient was uncomfortable with it, so he didn't go through with it. I recommended a basic monofocal lens implant for this patient. That was my first choice lens for this patient. And with a small and irregular pupil, I felt the value of laser was minimal. At most, one can perform LRIs, and this patient didn't have any significant astigmatism. I spoke with his retina specialist, and we decided that if we're going to do any presbyopia correction, the most we would offer is an EDOF lens, an extended depth of focus lens. And so we decided on Vividi lens implantation. And with the Vividi lens, you don't want the pupil to be too small. You'll get more myopia than you expect. And so that's another benefit of stretching the pupil like this. Ideally, you would use Y hooks for this maneuver, but if you don't have Y hooks at your ASC, you can use either a Kuglin or a Lester. And you're just trying to fracture the fibrotic band at that pupillary border. As you can tell here, a Kuglin definitely works better than a Lester. The AC has become very shallow here, so I'm going to reinflate the AC with some viscoelastic and then prepare to put in the Malugan ring. Don't forget to insert some viscoelastic posterior to the iris so that way you have space as you insert the ring. This air bubble is annoying me, so I'm just going to remove it with a cannula prior to putting in the ring. So now we're going to insert the Malugan ring, and I'm going to engage the distal loop first, followed by the loops on the left and right. And it's nice when you get them all together, but you, you can always insert them one by one. And next we'll use the Malugan manipulator to engage the proximal loop onto the iris border. There we go. And so center the Malugan ring first and then inflate the AC with a little bit more viscoelastic before starting your capsular axis. So now the case should be fairly routine. I use a sharp tip MST capsular axis forcep to puncture the anterior capsule and perform a capsular axis roughly five millimeters. This Malugan ring has a 6.25 millimeter diameter, so I can use that for reference. It looks like the zonules are good. I don't see any unusual folds in the capsule. Next, we're doing hydrodissection where we separate the cataract from the capsule using bound salt solution. 
a good hydro dissection and rotation makes the rest of the case so much easier. And it separates the cataract from the capsule so there's less connection and less transfer of energy when you're manipulating the cataract. There's less transfer of that energy to the capsule and zonules. So I'm doing a simple divide and conquer format. Just groove a few times, separate, and then take out the quadrants, protecting the cornea. Always protect the cornea with your second instrument when removing the first two quadrants. When you're removing the last piece, use your second instrument to protect the posterior capsule. All right, so now we're gonna do IA to remove the cortex. Comes out very easily. After cortical removal, we're gonna do some polishing. Polishing the capsule directly. You want a very clean capsule because in the post-operative period, you wanna know if the patient likes their lens implant and you don't need the PCO to interfere. So after polishing with the IA tip, we're gonna irrigate with bound salt solution, usually I dump a whole 3cc syringe on the capsule. After polishing the posterior capsule, we expand the bag and then polish the anterior capsule. This makes sure there's less phimosis later on. Then we're gonna insert our lens implant, remove the malugan ring starting with the distal loop. Always disengage the loops prior to pulling it out of the eye so it doesn't snag the iris outside of the wound. After all the loops are disengaged, you can remove the Malugan ring using the Malugan manipulator or a Kuglin. The first three loops usually come out easily with gentle traction. The final loop is usually a little bit more stubborn, but you can pull it out with gentle traction or just burping it out. So now the only thing left is to remove the viscoelastic and to center the lens implant. Although the pupil may look irregular now, we manipulated the iris relatively gently. So I'm hoping that after the dilation wears off, the pupil will not only be round, but hopefully it will also be reactive to light because we fractured that dense fibrotic band on the pupillary border. Here, I'm just centering the lens implant it looks like it has good overlap with the capsular excess border. And then I'm gonna hydrate my incisions, ensuring they're sealed and that the eye pressure is appropriate. I tap on the eye and notice the pressure is high, so I'm just gonna release some fluid, tap it again, and it has a good pressure. Now I'm gonna stress test my incisions. After drying them, I'm gonna tap the eye, make sure no water leaks out. So now we have a perfect seal. So here we are in the post-operative period, and as you can see, the pupil is nice and round. Unfortunately, the pupil reacts to light. In patients with a history of uveitis, you wanna put them on a prolonged steroid course during the post-operative period. I had this patient also follow up with their retina specialist. As you can see here, the lens is perfectly centered. Their vision was 2025 uncorrected. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.